Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead, we're gonna be replacing the saddle here, so I gotta take this saddle off. I'm gonna put it on another bike. This particular post has two bolts, one in the front, one in the rear. So we're gonna loosen maybe one or both at the same time until we're loose enough where we can just move the top plate over, get this guy off. So I'm gonna need enough room to get a tool in here. Right now I'm gonna hit my, uh, my clamp here. So to make this a little easier and for video purposes, I'm gonna extend the post up higher, but we gotta take it down to the ground. Just wanted to see how long this post was. It's pretty long. Typically we want about three inches in the frame for stability. I'm about right here. So I think we're doing okay. Just need enough space for that tool to not run into the clamp. Um, of course, you could be doing this with no stand and just having a friend hold it or leaning against the table and have it roll around. But uh, I prefer a stand. Okay, so slide this up. Now I got a little more space here to put a tool there. So my three-way is not gonna work very good. I think that is a four or a five millimeter. So I'm gonna go ahead with my owl tool here. All right, again, we got two bolts here. It looks like we're running a five millimeter. So I'm gonna start loosening. If one's really tight, try the other one. So I'm gonna loosen this guy. You might be able to get away with just one, but on the top of the saddle, uh, inside here, I could see the thread. So as I start to back out, I want all the threads on top to start disappearing. So these threads up here, I want those threads to dis just disappear. You might have to hang on. So that's gonna give you, so you have enough slack or movement to work with. Loosen up this guy. You could also use a T-handle with ball end, because the ball end allows you to get in at, a, at an odd angle and spin. So I want those threads to disappear, maybe just then some. So then I'll have plenty of space to work with. So there's a top plate up here. A top plate needs to come up and then I can dislodge the rail of the saddle. There we go, boom, we're good to go. All right, so we're gonna install a saddle. Um, basically putting back the uh, stock uh, Phenom saddle on this uh, 2018 Specialized Chisel. This guy right here. Um, two bolts, one, two. So if you tighten one too much, it's gonna tilt the nose. So you can actually uh, fix that with tightening one or the other. Uh, if you have issues with these bolts staying tight, uh, probably some grease, grease the threads, maybe even grease the base of the head because sometimes it's concave to convex. So um, yes, a little bit of grease will help uh, keep tension. So I believe this is, that's a five. So you can use an L tool or you can use your uh, T-handle, this guy here. So either one, and I'll probably utilize the ball end. So let's put that there. So right now these are loose. Right now there's no uh, bolt thread sticking up the top, it's down. So that means this guy's nice and loose. So I'm gonna be able to slide, get one rail started, lift up, kind of shift over. Whoop, and then the bottom wants to come loose. So just take your time, boom, it's on right there. Um, so right now I'm not worried about angling. I just want to get these get it tight enough so it'll stay in place So I'm gonna have basically sandwich the two plates together. So this seat doesn't slide and take off on me um, Actually, let's go with this guy. So I'm gonna use the ball and see if I can do a little speed turn and it doesn't Probably because it has thread locker. So it's gonna take some more pressure. That guy's a little awkward I'm gonna try my t-handle here careful not to scratch the top tube of your bike so a couple turns with one and try and squeeze, keep the plates together a couple turns with the other one. Oop. So if you find the, it pops out up on top, get a finger in there, push down on it so the bolt doesn't pop out the top. There we go. And it's actually making it tilt. So I don't know what the angle's supposed to be because I'm in the stand and the, the bike's at an angle. So now it's in place. It's still somewhat loose, but it's in place. It's not going anywhere. So now I can go ahead and bring the bike down to the ground. So I do this quite often. I take it off the repair stand, bring it down to the ground. If I need to center my wheels, open up your skewer. If you got a flip quick release, um, bike is straight. Don't touch the wheel. That'll allow you to center the wheel and then tighten it back up. So here I'm able to 
make sure that my saddle isn't tilted too far down or too far back because it could be uncomfortable either sliding forward putting too much pressure on your forearms and hands and wrists um, if it's too this way um, that could be uh, uncomfortable in the crotch basically bike standing straight up i'll give it a look just like that <clears throat> make sure this seat's more or less horizontal you know level with the ground um, if you have any slight issues just do minor increments of, mo of movement, maybe just a, a smidge of tightening to get this nose to go down just a little bit. That can relieve some pressure in this area. If you're going numb here in the crotch area, um, that could be part of it. So um, also sliding it uh, forwards and backwards. Um, this one has a cutout in the middle, so it should relieve some pressure there um, right now. So we're looking at the flattest portion. Might be hard to see on video, but usually the flattest portion of your saddle is gonna be right about here. Not so much on the nose or back here, right about here. As long as that looks flat with the ground. Um, and then the nose kind of comes down a bit. So you can also customize that. Everyone's a little bit different. Some guys might do a lot of steep climbing where you're really scooted up on the nose. So you don't want that nose too high. Overall, I want it for overall performance. So I want this nose to come up just a little bit. So I'm gonna use the bolt in the back. I'm gonna tighten it up, and if it's already getting tight and this guy doesn't move, then I'm gonna release tension, unloosen the bolt in front. Maybe one or two turns, it actually went up a little bit already. And then you can go ahead and tighten. So you're just playing that game, kind of going back and forth. All right, that looks really level. I don't wanna overdo it. I'm gonna come back over here, gentle tightening. So I'm just gonna go back and forth with gentle tightening, keeping this guy level. And again, be careful with the ball ends of your tools you start gaining them too tight, um, they will start to strip a bit. So I like that. So I'm gonna start cinching it up with the other end of the tool, a little bit there. And at this point, it should be staying still. It shouldn't be taken off back and forth, back and forth. It's more or less locked in place. If you still see one side moving, just tighten up the other side a lot more because it will eventually put pressure on the other side, not allowing it to really tighten up. So. Make sure that tool's in there good. Don't want to strip anything. That's pretty darn tight. Uh, if there is a torque setting number on your seat post, if it offers that, go ahead and tighten up these bolts with the torque wrench to that proper setting. And that's pretty good. So you can always go back and mess with your fore and aft, slide it forwards or backwards. Um, but that looks pretty good. I got mine shooting back all the way. One reason is uh, this saddle kind of flares out the sides. <clears throat> so warming up, I kind of feel like it's putting pressure on my inner thigh, not allowing the blood to flow there. It's actually kind of stopping the muscle from, from just warming up. So further I can get it back, the less flaring there is that's gonna hit on my inner thigh. So that's it. But yeah, make sure you're, you're straight. Right now I'm crooked. Let's line it up with the top tube nice and straight. This is a four millimeter. So down at my seat collar, it actually offers a torque setting of 6.2 Newton meters. Um, this guy offers a torque setting up at the saddle at 10 Newton meters. So um, when in doubt, get yourself a torque wrench. Nice and straight here. So I'm gonna gently tighten that, then I'm gonna get my torque wrench. I'm gonna break that out. So this is the Park Tool ATT1 A. D1. This one does not allow you to over tighten. It will click um, past um, once it reaches the proper torque setting. So right now it is set to six. This they're asking for 6.2. So at least we can get close. So you'll probably feel this turn a little bit and then click. Yeah. So if you try and turn again, it's just going to click. Won't allow you over to overturn. So pretty awesome tool. Um, and then it's all good. And you can test it, make sure that this guy's not too loose. You can always give this a tap, a pretty good tap. And if it kind of moves on you, uh, then it's too loose. So that's, that's one test there, but don't overdo it. Don't hurt yourself or don't break anything. 